Hello grade tens, and welcome to this lesson on Venn diagrams. These diagrams are a great way to show similarities and differences. Let's join Gege as she explains them in more detail. Here's a Venn diagram representing a set of animals. A set is just a collection of things that have something in common. For example, all animals have something in common. They breathe, they eat, they move, and so on. But a set of animals can be divided into smaller sets. Each smaller set is called a subset. A subset is a set that is completely contained within another set. For example, in the animal kingdom, the subsets are made up of mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish and insects. Then again, each subset consists of its own members. For instance, the members of the subset for mammals includes humans, monkeys, cats, rabbits and many other types of mammals. If we put each subset into a circle and label it so that all the circles together represent the total possible number of subsets that make up the bigger set, we have a very simple Venn diagram. Earlier we decided to have a bit of fun and see how I could use hula hoops and bean bags to represent Venn diagrams in probability. As you can see, Rafila is standing in a doorway with her back to the room and she is going to throw a bean bag over her shoulder into the room. The idea is that we want the bean bag to land in the hula hoop. That's what we call our favorable outcome. So let's see where the bean bag lands. Okay, so it landed out of the circle this time. When the bean bag is thrown, it has to land somewhere in the room. It could have landed here, or here, or here. So the whole rectangular floor represents all the possible outcomes. In probability theory, when we represent all the possible outcomes visually like this, we call the space that represents all the possible outcomes the sample space. So the sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. Now two possible things could have happened when the bean bag was thrown into the room. It could have landed in the circle, it could have landed outside the circle. When we're working with probability, we call the things that could happen events. In other words, an event is a description of an outcome from an experiment. In this experiment, there were two possible events. Let's look at them. The bean bag could have landed outside the circle and it could have landed inside the circle. We'll call it in the circle even if it touched a line. I wanted it to land in the circle so the event of it landing inside the circle would have been the favorable outcome. We tried the experiment again but this time Rifila placed two hula hoops in the room. Now there is another possible outcome. The bean bag could land in here or in here or outside both of the circles. So, there are three possible outcomes. The event I want to happen is for the bean bag to land inside a hoop, any hoop. So I've created two ways in which the favorable event could occur. The bean bag could land in the space inside either of the two hoops. We talk about this space as the event space. The event space is the set of all the favorable outcomes. As we've just seen, there are two ways of getting a favorable outcome or of the bean bag landing in the event space in each trial. So here we see that the event space is a subset of the sample space. If the bean bag lands inside one of the circles, it's still landing somewhere in the room. And landing in the room is the sample space, the set of all possible outcomes. I used the bean bag and the hula hoops to show you what Venn diagrams look like. I didn't actually explore the chances the bean bag had of landing in or out of the hoops. Now let's look at another situation that we can represent with a Venn diagram. It's a simple game with coins played by two or more people. Everyone in the group flips two coins and if you flip two tails, you lose. Understandably, no one wants to get a tails and a tails. What is the sample space, the set of all possible outcomes in this game? Let's work out all the possible outcomes. You could get heads and heads or heads and tails or tails and heads or of course two tails. So we have four possible outcomes and therefore we have a sample space of four. Now, what is the event space, the set of favorable outcomes for these coins? Well, we don't want to get two tails. So the event we want is not tails, tails. There are three ways of not getting two tails. 
So let's put them all together in one circle. That is the set of favorable outcomes, the event space. So far, we've only discussed situations in which something can only belong to one subset. For example, a lion belongs to the subset of mammals. It cannot belong to the subset of birds or the subset of reptiles. And when we flip a coin, it can only land on heads or tails. It cannot possibly land on both at the same time. But sometimes an event can fall into more than one subset. Let's go back to the hula hoops and the bean bag to see how this can happen. If these two hula hoops overlap like this. The bean bag could land here in the overlapping part. Now, how can we describe where the bean bag has landed? It's inside hoop 1, but it's also inside hoop 2. The overlapping circles are called the intersecting subsets, and we draw them exactly the way you see them here. Here's the room, our sample space, the set of all possible outcomes. And here's one possible outcome, landing inside this hoop. Another possible outcome is the beanbag landing inside the second hoop. But in this example, the two circles are intersecting, so the beanbag could also land inside both circles in the intersecting area here. That's a third possible outcome. Lastly, the beanbag could also land in the sample space but outside any of the hoops. So there are four possible outcomes in this situation. This is how we can represent possible outcomes and favorable outcomes using a Venn diagram with a sample space and event spaces. The event spaces can be separate or they can intersect. Now let's solve a problem using a Venn diagram to help us. Gerard helped Rufilo out with a Venn diagram for something she had to do at school. Let's go and see what they're up to. What's up? I'm totally confused about these lists I'm working on. Mr. Sotola is working out the afternoon timetable for the school. He asked me to find out how many people want to do arts on Tuesdays and Thursdays and how many want to do music on those days. Everybody has to do something. Is that all the choice we have? What about sport? We've got that as well. On Mondays and Wednesdays, we do sports. And on Fridays, it's intellectual things like chess, debating, or social responsibility projects. But at the moment, I'm trying to sort out art and music. I asked all those who wanted to do art to write down their names on the art list. And if they wanted to do music, they had to write their names on the music list. Mr. Satole made sure that everyone filled in something. So what's the problem? There are 336 names on the art list and 584 names on the music list. But that doesn't make sense. There are only 800 students in the school. 336 plus 584 is 920. I see. Hey, maybe some people want to do art and music, so they put the names down on both lists. That's probably it. Let's check. Yeah. Look, this name comes up on both lists. So does this one. Oh no, now I have to go through both lists and check every single name to see how many people put their names down twice. Why? I mean your teacher just wants the numbers to do a timetable, doesn't he? Not the actual names. Sure, and he wants the numbers by tomorrow morning. Let's see. There are 800 learners in the school, right? Someone to do art, someone to do music, and someone to do both. 336 for arts and 584 for music is a total of 920. 920 minus 800 is 120. So that means 120 people are in the middle here. They want to do art and music. But if 120 people are doing both, we must take those 120 out of this part of the art circle and out of this part of the music circle. We want this part to show people who only want to do art. Okay, so that's 336 minus 120, which is 216. And in this part, we want people who only want to do music. That's 584 minus 120. That's 464. So there you are. Those are the numbers you have to hand in. Let's look at that diagram again. 
It's a great example of a Venn diagram with intersecting subsets. Here's a subset of the people who only want to do art, 216. This subset of 464 is of people who only want to do music. And this area shows that there are 120 people who want to do both. That accounts for 800 students. It's very important to notice that altogether the numbers must add up to the total sample space. They cannot come to more than the sample space. Now, let's calculate a probability using the Venn diagram. Let's suppose the school allows learners to do both music and art if they want to. What's the probability that if I walk into this school, the first learner I talk to does both art and music? We can use the probability ratio we've used before, the number of favorable outcomes out of the total number of possible outcomes. In Venn diagram terms, that's the event space out of the sample space. The event space, or the number of favorable outcomes, those who are doing both art and music, is 120. The sample space is 800. 40 goes into 120 three times, and 40 goes into 800 20 times. So, 3 out of every 20 learners do both art and music. As a percentage, that's 15% of the learners. So, there's a 15% chance that the first person I meet does both art and music. Thank you for joining us, Grade 10s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Introducing Probability Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about probability on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.